All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to go inside the message event and we're going to parse our message and check to see if the user sent a command. Because right now our commands don't work that are in these files. We need to actually get what the command name is. We need to require the module and we need to call the run function. Well, we don't have to require the module. We just have to get it from the map. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and first get the guild prefix that's in, that's from our database, but it's cached. So we're going to do const prefix equals guild command prefixes. So this is our map. Remember, we map all of our guild IDs to the prefix. So we can do message.guild.id. This will get us the prefix that we have saved in the database. We're going to go ahead and get the command prefix or the use prefix that the person used. So we're going to do message content dot slice. So we're going to go from zero up to the correct prefix dot link. And then we're going to go ahead and compare prefix to use prefix. And if this is true, that means that they are using the command with a correct prefix. OK, now if it's true, we got to go ahead and get the command name as well as its args. So to do that, we're going to do const and we're going to do square bracket. We're using uh, object destructuring or array destructuring command name. And I'm going to use a spreader operator for the command args. And I'll explain what this does in just one sec. But we're going to assign this to the value of message.content uh, dot slice prefix dot length. So we want to get rid of the prefix first. And then what I want to do after is I want to split the entire string with a regular expression. And we're just going to use spaces. OK, so basically what's happening here is when we call dot split, it's going to return an array. And the first element in the array is always going to be the command name. So since we're using object destructuring, that value is going to be assigned to command name. The first element is going to be assigned here. Every other element is going to be assigned into command args. OK, every other element is just the rest of the command arguments, right? But because we're using a spreader operator, this will join them all together into an array. If I log command name to the console, and if I log command args to the console, see how it says help, and then we have an array 5, 6. And that's command args over here. If I got rid of this spreader operator, these three dots is called the spreader operator. If I got rid of it, this is just going to give us the first argument or also known as the second element in the array. So for example, if I were to do exclamation mark help four five six, notice how it's just going to say help and then four. Okay, because we're ignoring the rest of the arguments from the array. So to get all those arguments, we're going to do spreader operator. So that's three dots and then the name of the variable that we want to assign it to. Okay, and likewise, if I were to do three dots, like, so if I were used to spread up here on an array, that would basically unpack the argument. So if I log this to the console, you're going to see now, instead of it printing out in an array, we were using the spreader operator to unpack the array. So it's basically like, you know, packing elements and unpacking elements. Okay, think of it like that. We are packing the rest of the arguments from the array into just one array over here. So what's next is we want to check the command name to see if it's in the client dot commands map, which is what we have declared over here. So we're going to go ahead and do const command equals client dot commands dot get remember they're mapped by their name okay and if command we're going to go ahead and execute the commands function so before i even do anything else let me just log into the console just to show you what's going on okay so over here we're referencing client dot commands which is a map which we declared over here and inside the register commands function this is where we are setting the key value pairs where the key is the command name and the value is the command module. So over here, if we log command to the console, you're going to see that it's just going to log the, uh, well, should log. Do we not have the help command? Do we not have a help command? Oh, I think it's info. No, wait. Oh, yeah, we don't have our commands registered for some reason. Let's, oh, wait, what am I talking about? Oh, yeah, because we don't have a help command. But if I do info, it should work. So if I do info, one, two, three. See how it prints out info command to the console if I do ban? One, two, three. Okay. Band command. And if I do kick, three, four. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a kick command. Okay. Obviously, if I do a play command, play four, five, six, that would also work. So basically, every single command that is registered in the commands folder will be inside the guild command prefixes map. So if the command was found, okay, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and execute the run function of the command. So we're going to go ahead and do command dot run. And we're going to pass in the client instance. We're going to pass in the message object and command args. OK, and I think that should be it for now. Let's see, we've done all our checks. OK, let's go ahead and check this out real quick. We also need to make sure 
that we're taking in the arguments as well inside our commands. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go inside info and let's just pass in client message args. And let's go inside here, client message args. It's going to be the same thing for almost all of your commands. And you don't have, yeah. Okay, so let's have our bot restart. Okay, so one, two, three, you're going to see that it's going to say undefined was invoked. Uh, I think I have an error. Yeah, I don't know why I have this dot name. It's this dot name. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. So, ban one, two, three. Ban was invoked. Info one, two, three. Info was invoked. And what was the other one? Play one, two, three. There we go. And now, if I go into my other guild, if I use the info command, you're going to see that it's saying info was invoked. But if I use my other prefix, which was exclamation mark, if I do info in this guild, info. See how info is not invoked? If I do it again, info is not invoked. Ban three, four. It's not invoked because we are on this guild and we're using our own prefix. Okay. Ban was invoked. All right, so that's pretty much it for this whole tutorial. Just wanted to show you guys how you can easily check what the command is so that way you can execute the correct one. Uh, just a quick recap, all we're doing is we're getting the guild prefix from the cache, remember, and I'm going to be repeating myself over and over again until you guys understand it, until you guys get in your heads, but guild command prefixes is a cache that is used to store the results that are fetched from a database. We're getting the guild command prefix, and what we're doing here is we are getting the use prefix that the user used with the message. And then we're comparing to see if these two prefixes are the same. Okay, if they use the incorrect prefix, this would not be the same. Okay, const command name, comma, command args, we're using something called object destructuring. Okay, and over here, what we're doing is we are slicing our message from zero up to the prefix dot length. Okay. So over here, we're just slicing the entire message. So we're getting rid of the command prefix because we only care about the name as well as the arguments. At this point, when we're inside this case, we don't really care about the prefix anymore because we already know that they're using the correct prefix. And then we're splitting it with a regular expression. And the slash, the backward slash s basically represents white space and plus allows us to eat up all that white space in between every single argument. So it'll return all of our arguments in an array separated by white space. Okay. Now I will warn you guys, if you were to uh, use commas right now, it would not work. Okay. Like if you were to use commas in your, for your command arguments, it would not work. But in the, in the later videos, we're going to go ahead and set it up so that you can use any kind of delimiter for your command. And then over here, we're just checking to see if the command exists in the map. And we're just doing client.commands.get command name. And if that command is actually in our map, we're just gonna check to see if command is a truthy value. And if it is, that means the command is in the map. So we're just gonna call it run. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to move the change prefix command into its own file. There's a little bit of things that we have to do, but we're gonna do that in the next video. All right, so I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.